Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything and I'm so excited to bring you a complete reshoot of the fiber laser setup video. It's gonna help you out whether you're setting up a brand new fiber laser for the first time or you just picked up a brand new lens and you wanna set it up with your fiber laser marking machine. This is the video for you. Don't go anywhere because we're getting started right now. I really am so excited to be shooting this video right now. When I made the first fiber laser setup video, I did it because I was bored and I was not taking the channel seriously yet. Now that we've got a bunch of really nice equipment and I have a mindset for what I want the channel to be and this amazing audience and all of our awesome Patreon supporters, I feel well prepared to do a reshoot on this video even though it's only been a couple months uh, and really make it the way it was supposed to be done the first time. So buckle up, we've got a lot to cover and we're still starting with making sure that our lens even fits into our machine. So we're gonna go check that out right now. If this is your first time setting up your fiber laser and you want some additional lens, they're actually really affordable, about $50 US, and you can learn all about how to pick them for your machine right up here. So if you're not sure what fiber laser theta lens to get and you wanna get more and you're not sure what they do and you have a bunch of questions, watch this video right here. It's gonna tell you everything you need to know about getting set up with new lenses. So this isn't a view you guys get very often, but here we are at the fiber laser, and if you are setting up your laser for the first time, your lens is likely already installed. If you've bought a new lens for your fiber laser, however, we're gonna have to install it. And the first thing we wanna do is make sure that the lens actually fits. So we're just gonna go ahead and bring our tower all the way up here as high as it'll go so that we have nice, easy access to our lens. Our lens is nice and high now, so we can come in here and we can remove the old lens. We want to leave the spacer on. We really don't want to mess up the threads inside the scan heads. We don't want to remove our spacer unless we absolutely have to. Uh, but for today's purposes, we really don't, so we're not going to. We're just going to unscrew the lens and remove it from the machine. I like to use two hands, so that way I have one to turn it and one to guide and catch it because these things are heavy and you don't want it to fall out of the machine and hit your aluminum work table. We do want to cap our old lens immediately um, just to protect that lens so that we don't have any issues with that and we can set it in the box to the side uh, for the next time that we need to use it. Then we can pull the caps off of the new lens and we can insert this into the machine. You want to come straight up and twist gently and uh, be sure not to cross thread it. Cross threading these will destroy the threads and you won't be able to screw it in or use it anymore. Cross threading is everybody's worst nightmare, but I'm gonna teach you a really simple trick to make sure that it never happens to you. All you have to do is insert the lens so that it's just barely touching the spacer. Once it's there, you're actually gonna turn it backwards until you can feel it click into place. Once you feel that kind of snap and it pops in, that means it's lined up with the threads and ready to go. And then you can start turning it to the right again to screw it into the spacer. Now that our new lens is physically installed in the machine, we can jump into EasyCAD to get some of the basic setup done. After that, we'll come back here to find our focal point. Okay guys, so now that we know that your new lens fits, if you're a new lens person, uh, we are ready to start setting up EasyCAD. If you are a first time fiber laser setter upper, this is exactly where you wanna start. And we are going to begin by either unzipping, uh, decompressing our EasyCAD folder. If it's in a zip file, it needs to be opened up uh, so that we can move files around inside. If you already have EasyCAD set up, we're gonna copy your existing folder and we're just gonna paste it again. Uh, since I'm adding a new lens today, I'm gonna copy and paste. We've got our new copy right there. And we're gonna rename this from EasyCAD 110, which was my original lens size, to EasyCAD 220. And there we go, that looks good. Uh, and we'll open it up and take a peek inside. And if we scroll down, we're not gonna look at any of this right now. We just wanna find the executable file, the application. Uh, and it says EasyCAD 2 110 F 182. So. Uh, we're going to rename this as well. We want to change 110 to 220, obviously, because we have a 220 lens. Uh, and then F, the uh, F is our focal distance. Um, focal distance, and we'll talk more about that when we find our focal point. Uh, but you can just take this number off your lens or your box. On my lens, it says 330, so we'll add 330 and hit enter. 
and uh, now that's good we're good to go now before we leave this folder we can drop our new parameter libraries into this folder if you're a patron you get instant access to my entire fiber laser library and this is the perfect time to add it to your folder so uh, let's take care of that really quick so here's the fiber laser library posts that our patrons can see and if we scroll down there's two options if you're on EasyCAD 3 you're gonna want the Excel file um, you can't import these libraries into EasyCAD 3 they can only be imported into EasyCAD 2 uh, if you're on EasyCAD 2 which is most people you can just go ahead and download the zip folder and that's gonna have our parameter files inside um, we can come down here and open up our downloads folder we're actually done with Chrome we can close that and there it is there's our parameters and we can unzip this and we'll open it up and you can see there's a param folder there and we've got a param folder here in our EasyCAD so we'll just open both of these and you can see the files are the same and we're going to copy the downloaded ones out and paste them into our EasyCAD folder and boom the settings are there uh, if you are using a different lens size these settings were developed for a 110 millimeter lens so they might take some adjustments but it's a great jumping off point and I have other videos about how to adjust for the lens size uh, so check those out if you need to make conversions but we've got our parameter files in there uh, so that's enough of a sidetrack for today and with that done we can go ahead and open EasyCAD 2 so we'll open that up the other thing we can do too which I forgot to mention is we can uh, right click this here and we can just go to create shortcut and we'll get rid of this annoying uh, dash shortcut at the end that's a pet peeve of mine I really hate that uh, so there's our shortcut file and we can cut this and go paste this to the desktop as well so that we don't have to come into the folder every time we want to launch EasyCAD so there's that for next time uh, but here we are this is EasyCAD we're not going to go into all of the tools and stuff today. Um, I'm going to make an EasyCAD 101 video about that. We're going to sink our teeth a little deeper into it. For now, we just want to get the thing working. We just want to get it functioning. So a really quick overview right here at the bottom, we have our control panel and uh, we've got our red light pointer. We're going to use that a lot today. This lights up a preview with a red dot laser so that we can see what we're doing before we do it. Uh, the mark button is going to mark for us. Uh, we're also going to be using the uh, show contour uh, box so that's down here as well uh, and we'll be visiting the parameters for the machine very soon but before we get into all of that we want to come up to this little wrench and screwdriver here and uh, this is our system parameters so these are like easy CAD settings not machine settings but easy CAD settings uh, and they're really easy to manipulate so we're going to talk about these really quick so uh, in general here we've got a couple things um, we can turn on or off our grid uh, so that's just this light blue grid lines in here you can see those in there um, we can also change the space between those grid lines so how far apart or close together they are uh, I like two millimeters so I leave mine at two millimeters but you can go ahead and entirely turn this off if you don't like it uh, and just go ahead and get rid of it so that's always an option uh, and that's about it in um, the general tab you can change your unit type here so millimeters to inches if you want I think millimeters are more accurate and I like the metric system so I'm going with millimeters uh, next tab will be the color tab and this changes the color of things inside your workspace uh, but only inside your workspace this isn't going to change your menus and buttons and things like that so you're not going to get a true dark mode but if you prefer to work on an inverted surface in your workspace you can change those colors right here moving on we have the workspace tab uh, and inside the workspace tab we have a few different boxes we can check checking or unchecking show workspace will get rid of this outline box here um, we like to see our workspace so we're going to leave that checked you can also change the square to a circle with the same diameter as the width of the square if you prefer that but I like squares we're gonna leave it on square and lastly we can check or uncheck the show center cross line which is just these dotted lines right here which show you the origin of the machine I do like having that on as well um, and here is the first major thing we have to change our field size we're coming from a 110 by 110 lens uh, if you're a brand new machine you may already have this set up by your manufacturer but check the size of your lens you should know what size lens you have but check the size of your lens and make sure it matches here we know that we have a 220 so we're going to go ahead and pop that in here and here um, 
this left bottom corner determines where our center is. So I'm not going to go into the math on how this works, but just know that the left bottom corner is going to be half of your size and negative. So uh, we've got a 220 here, so we're going to be changing this to negative 110. And uh, same thing up here, we're going from 220 to negative 110. And uh, that's going to give us our nice big box. There it is, there's our workspace. And our bottom left corner is way down here at negative 110, negative 110, which puts our origin right in the middle. So uh, that is done and that looks really good. The last thing that I wanna talk about in uh, this menu is going to be the move and rotate settings. Your nudge distance is how much an object will move when you hit the arrow keys. So I have mine set to 0.1 millimeters and I like that. The big nudge scale is how much you wanna multiply the nudge distance by when you hold shift. So if we set this to five, instead of moving 0.1 millimeters each time I hit the arrow key, if I hold shift, it's gonna move it 0.5 because we're multiplying that 0.1 by five. You can set this to 10, you can set this to 100, whatever. Um, so find something that works for you. We're gonna leave ours at five now. And then the rotate angle is how far an object will be rotated while holding control and hitting the arrow keys. Um, the best way to show you all of this is to demonstrate it. So we're going to just grab uh, our square tool right here and we will zoom in a little bit and create a small square. Shift C, we'll center that up for us. A little quick tip for you. And uh, if we use the arrow keys, we can see that we're moving 0.1 millimeters at a time. If we hold shift, it multiplies that 0.1 by five. So we'll start moving 0.5 millimeters at a time. So that's a bigger movement there. Lastly, we can hold control. If we go ahead and use the arrow keys now, it will rotate our object by 15 degrees as we requested it to. So those are those three settings and how they work. One final note about this box in here, you can set the uh, language here if you use a different language, but we use English, so we're gonna leave it at English uh, and that will be fine there. So that's the easy stuff guys. Uh, the easy stuff is taken care of uh, and we're moving on to some of the more challenging things now. Um, they're not challenging, they're just detailed. So uh, we're gonna come down here and click param. You can also use F3 on the keyboard as a keyboard shortcut if you prefer to do that. And uh, the first thing right away we see here is that our field size is wrong. We have a 220 lens so we need to change our field size to 220. Um, as we're doing stuff today, you may notice that things on your laser are backwards. Uh, if you have backwards stuff, this is the reason right here, This which Galvo is the x-axis. Uh, and you can go ahead and just switch this if you see things on your laser that are backwards. Just click the other button, problem solved, no problem. Uh, over here, we have the go to position after mark. Um, I like mine set to Galvo Center, and this just tells the Galvos where to point when a job is done. I like mine right in the middle because I always leave my red light pointer on 24 seven. If the machine's on, my red light's on, and having it home back to the center after a job is complete makes it really easy for me to line up new parts and see where I should be focusing to and things like that. So I like to leave mine on Galvo Center. Down here, we have our field warp adjustments. So um, we're gonna get into this later. If you draw a circle on your workspace and you light that up and you don't see a circle, you see some kind of weird, funny shape, you need to adjust these settings. We can't really do anything with this until we know our focal point and that's coming up. So for now, we're gonna leave this, but we are gonna come back to this at the end. So uh, if you have some weird shapes and things don't look right and there's distortions, just ignore it and follow the rest of the tutorial in order. Uh, we will fix that at the end, I promise. So uh, here's this, uh, that's where it is, and we're gonna come back to that and we'll talk about it later. We're done with this tab and we're ready to move on to the laser control tab. So if we come in here, we don't wanna change too much that's going on in this menu. Um, if this is your first time setting up your fiber laser, most of this should be set up by the manufacturer, but there's a few things you wanna check. You wanna make sure that you have fiber selected. Um, I'm assuming that you're setting up a fiber laser if you're watching this video, so we wanna make sure we have fiber picked. We wanna make sure that our maximum and minimum frequencies match the manufacturer's specifications for our machine. Uh, if you're not sure, join the Discord, ask for help. We can probably help you find that information if you're looking for it. Um, I have a GPT, so I'm gonna drop this down and select JPT from the list. Uh, and I know that my machine has a max 400 kilohertz frequency and a minimum 20. So there's my 20 and 400. Uh, with that done, we don't wanna touch anything else in this menu. 
leave it all alone. Uh, even if you've never set it up before, you just don't touch it. Just leave it be. Make sure these three things are right. Fiber, your fiber source manufacturer, and your minimum and max frequency. And then we can go ahead and move on to the next tab. These are your port settings, and your port settings manage how your laser talks to outside peripheral devices. Uh, for example, rotary tools or um, you know foot pedals for activating the laser. Uh, for example, the start marking in out is my foot pedal, and I know that it's input port 15 because I asked my manufacturer, uh, and that's just kind of what you have to do. Uh, that or guess and check, but that's where these controls are. Again, we're not gonna get too into what's going on in here today. I just wanted to show you what it is, uh, what it does, and where you can find it when you're ready to set that up in the future. Uh, so that's how we do that. Now we're in the other tab, and we have a few things to discuss in here. These settings right here, your min speed, max speed, laser sleep time, should all be left at default. Uh, I wouldn't change them from whatever the manufacturer has set. Um, or whatever it's reading from your control board, just leave them alone. If we come over here, we can see total marking time. That's how long the laser has run. And total part numbers is how many jobs it's completed. We can also come down here and we can see a few more options that will allow us to change our uh, you know, laser experience here. We can also come down here and see a few more options that allow us to customize our laser experience. Um, the very first option is show start mark dialog. And uh, this is a cool option. If we hit OK and we just put something in here that we can laser, if I hit mark, it's going to make sure that I want to start marking. This is a really useful feature for new users to make sure you don't mark anything by accident before you're absolutely ready to do so. Um, I don't like it because I like to do things very quickly and I've been doing this a long time. So when you're ready, you can disable it. But uh, if you're new, I definitely recommend checking that box. Another item of interest is this auto reset mark count. So uh, if we come down here and we see this total number set to three, that means it's going to run whatever settings we've chosen three times. Uh, and each time this part number is going to go up. So it'll run it and then it'll go to one, it'll run it again, and then it'll say two, and then it'll run it again and it will say three. Uh, and then stop. And when it stops, this box is going to reset that number automatically so that you're set up to do another three parts. Uh, it's very convenient uh, and very well tied with the disable mark when reach total count. So this just means when we have our total number set to three and our part number reaches three, it's gonna stop. That's what we would want it to do when it reached the limit that we set. So we'll check both of those boxes. Uh, and then lastly, we do wanna just look at the enable marking pause mode. Uh, this is another really handy feature here. So if we just go ahead and hatch this and I hit mark, um, and it's, there's our start mark dialog, right? It's checking to make sure we want to start. We're going to hit OK, and it's going to start marking. Now, if I hit Escape, it's going to ask me if I'd like to continue. It has effectively paused the job in the middle of working. Um, this is something that didn't used to work very well on EasyCAD, but it is working now, and it is immensely useful. So I definitely recommend enabling it. Uh, we can either hit OK to continue where we left off, or we can hit Cancel and forget about the whole thing. Um, that's just insanely useful, so definitely recommend turning that on. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about with you guys is in this red light pointer menu right here. So the first thing in this menu I want to talk about is the show contour. And what this does is uh, when this isn't checked and we hit OK, uh, we've got our circle here that we were just working on. If I hit the light button, it's not going to light the circle. It's just going to light a box around the circle. If you want to actually see the outline of the vectors that you're trying to engrave, we want to turn show contour on. Uh, then it's going to light the actual shape of the circle and not just put a box around whatever we're trying to mark. You can also find the show contour box down here on the control panel for some reason. Uh, there it is, so you can just go ahead and check that on there if you prefer to do it that way. Back in our red light pointer menu, however, uh, we also have enable always show. I like to leave this on for my laser. It just means that that red laser is going to be on all the time. Uh, I like having it on all the time for a variety of reasons, but um, if you want it on, there's the setting for it. If you don't want it on, you can turn it off. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention in this is your scale. Uh, and this is the scale of the red light in comparison to the scale of the regular fiber laser. If you engrave a 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter box on a piece of scrap material 
and then you measure it and it's 10 by 10 that looks good and then you light it and your red light box is bigger or smaller than the actual mark on the metal this is where you can adjust that and you can make that red light pointer larger or smaller to match the uh, the size of the object that you engraved so that when you're using your red light pointer in the future you know it's accurate so again that's where those settings are we're going to leave those for now because i like the way they're set up and we'll hit okay all right guys so i know that was a lot of information i'm throwing a lot at you right now if you need help join the discord there's a link down in the description i'm on there almost every day and i can help you with anything that you've missed during this tutorial so uh, make sure that you join the discord so that you can get help if you need it um, we're done in this menu. The last thing we need to talk about is our warp adjustments because like I said, you might have some funny shapes right now when you're engraving and lighting your objects. But before we can do any more work on getting those settings set up, we have to find our focal point. So let's go head over to the fiber laser and we'll find the focal distance of our lens so that we can come back and tackle this. All right guys, so your fiber laser on easy CAD's end is 99% of the way there. We're almost done setting it up, uh, but we do need to find our focal point. Now on your lens, it should tell you about where you wanna go uh, to get started. On my lens, it says F equals 330. And what that means is the distance from the lens to the table should be about 330 millimeters. Now here's a focal stick I've cut for my fiber laser for uh, focusing things to it. And I can tell you that this one is 350 and changed. So we're almost 20 millimeters out of focus if we go by the focal distance listed on the lens. I'm gonna teach you how to find the perfect focal point for your laser and it's gonna start by us lifting the lens as high as it'll go. So we're just gonna come up here and we're just gonna go straight up. And here we go guys, it's as high as it'll go. And the reason we start high instead of low is because if we start low, we actually increase the chance of a beam reflecting back into the laser and destroying our laser source. Uh, we don't want that. So we're gonna start high and come down until we find a good spot. For this test, you're gonna want a piece of scrap metal and you're gonna want to position it directly underneath your laser just to protect your bed. Mine's already destroyed, but you don't have to destroy yours. So we will get a piece of scrap metal, we'll throw it down right here, and we're actually gonna go over to EasyCAD to set up our little experiment. So we're ready to find our focal distance and uh, all we need to do to get this set up is grab our box tool and we're just gonna draw a little box here and uh, we're gonna hit Shift C to center and we're gonna set it to, I think 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters is good. And we'll hit apply and Shift C again to center it up. Uh, and with this done, all we have to do now is hatch it. So we'll hit hatch and uh, it doesn't really matter what our hatch settings are today, but for now you can just copy mine. It's a standard hatch. Uh, so we'll hit okay, we've got it hatched. Uh, for our settings, we just want a speed of a thousand a power of 80 and a frequency of 25 and this is going to be great for us to uh, test out and just find the perfect focal point and we're going to talk more about that over at the machine with our box created we're ready to find our focal point if we hit f1 on our keyboard it's actually going to throw that box down onto our metal uh, in the form of like a red light outline and uh, we can see exactly where that's going to fall so just make sure that your scrap metal is lined up so that the laser is hitting that uh, we definitely want to put safety goggles on for this because we don't want to catch any reflections. We like having our vision and we'd like to keep it that way. So I'm going to grab my goggles. That's better. And uh, don't worry if the box that you're seeing from the red light laser or the box that's engraved isn't perfect. Those are the field warp adjustments and we're going to talk about that at the end. But again, we have to find our focal point first. So uh, with everything all set up, we're going to go ahead and hit F2 and it should start marking the metal. It's running now, but we can't hear or see anything. That's to be expected, we're way out of focus. So the first thing that we have to do is just start slowly bringing the laser head down. And we're waiting to hear, we wanna listen and look to see if we're getting a mark. The lower we go, the louder and brighter our reaction is going to be. And at the point where the laser is the brightest and loudest, that's our ideal focus point. So that's what we're looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of rotate this thing down and try to find that perfect spot. Take a listen. So 
so now I can see and hear it's visibly and audibly marking this metal. That's really, really good start. That's exactly what we want. Once you find the approximate area where your machine is marking, slowly move it a little bit closer and a little bit further away just to balance it in as much as you possibly can. We want to be accurate to half a millimeter on this focus to get the best results every time going forward. And that's looking and sounding really good. So we found our focal point. The next thing that we need to do is take a measurement and create some kind of device or stick that'll allow us to find this focal point every time. If your laser has two red light pointers, they can be positioned so that they meet in the middle at the correct focal point. If you focus too close or too far away, the two beams will separate and you'll know you're out of focus. I prefer having a physical stick where I can actually measure the distance, but a lot of people do prefer having the red lights as their focal guide. If you want to set these up for your new lens, the best way to do it is to grab a small Allen wrench and loosen both of the red lasers. Make a small dot in the middle of your field and then align both of these red light lasers so that they line up on the dot in the center of the field. Once you have them in that position, tighten them back up with your Allen wrench and you're good to go. So we found our focal point, just that perfect sweet spot where everything is the loudest and brightest. What do we do next? Well, we have to measure this somehow. And the way I like to do it is with these clear metric acrylic rulers. I got mine from Staples, but you can probably find them on Amazon for a lot less. I'll include a link to one that I like in the description if you need to pick one up. Get a view as dead on as possible, and then go ahead and line up your ruler with the laser head. You want to keep the ruler as straight as possible to get the most accurate measurement. The number we're looking for is right here, right where the ruler crosses the lip of the lens. My lens appears to be sitting right at 350 millimeters. But don't forget, if your zero doesn't start at the bottom of the ruler, we have to account for this additional space and add it to our total. So we'll go ahead and take a measurement of this next. We can easily measure this space with our handy dandy caliper. And that seems to give us a result of six millimeters. So with an initial measurement of 350 millimeters and our additional supplementary measurement of 6 millimeters, we can reasonably conclude that the perfect focal point for our fiber laser is 356 millimeters. What do you do with this information? Well, if you use the red light pointer method for focusing, nothing. You're good to go. But if you're like me and you don't like the red light pointer method, you can do something like create a focal stick. I drew this stick, it's 356 millimeters long exactly. I think this one's actually 355, so I could improve this one. Um, and then I just cut it out on my CO2 laser tube. I like this design because the T-shape allows me to put this at any point on the lens. I can go ahead and slide this around and the T-shape keeps it nice and flat with the lens so I can find a focal point on whatever part of the material I'm working on. You could also cut something 356 millimeters long out of like a dowel rod. It doesn't need to be expensive. You don't need a CO2 laser. Just get a dowel rod, measure 356, chop it off, and you've got a starting point. You can line your dowel rod up with the edge of the lens, and boom, you've got a focal point. It doesn't give you the same versatility as the T-shaped stick because you can't slide it back and forth along the lens, but it's better than nothing. The last method is that you can find wherever on this scale your laser is in focus with the bed. For this one, it looks to be about 273. So I can draw a line and write 220. And now I know that the 220 lens is focused with the bed at 273 millimeters. We can now measure the width of our material. The steel sheet, for example, would be one millimeter. And we could simply add one millimeter to our focus. And now we know that this lens will be in focus with our steel sheet because we took our base of 273 and we added one millimeter to it for 274. There are a ton of ways you can get your laser in focus once you know the focal distance of your lens. Personally, for me, nothing beats the classic focal stick. It's something I can touch and feel and see with my eyes, and uh, I just trust that more than anything else. But 
With that said, any of the methods I've discussed in the video so far are legitimate methods and people on our Discord server use all of them. So if you have any questions about a particular one, feel free to hop into the Discord and ask some questions. People would be happy to help you out. Okay guys, it's time to start the dreaded field warp adjustments. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This next part really kind of sucks. Uh, it's super tedious and uh, it's just not fun to do, but we have to do it. So we're going to do it. A lot of my viewers recommended that I use the core file method which is a separate piece of software included with EasyCAD to help you make these adjustments but personally I find them a lot more complicated than they need to be and this is supposed to be a beginner tutorial so I'm going to show you the way I know how to do it that's the easiest conceptually to understand and show on camera. We'll cover the core file method in another video. There's just a lot going on and uh, it can be kind of hard to follow so I'm going to do this the simple more tedious but simple way uh, and we'll tackle the advanced way another time. So the point of these settings right here is to make sure that the proportions and dimensions on screen match what we're getting from the laser. And because we're shooting a laser from a single point down across a board, there's guaranteed to be some warping of the shapes that we're trying to engrave. We have two galvos here. Uh, as you can see, my galvo two is my X. So this is my X and this is my Y. We have a couple adjustments we can make, the concave convex adjustment, the uh, parallelogram adjustment, and the trapezoidal adjustment. And some combination of these six numbers is going to give us a perfect square when we don't have one from the start. In order to make accurate adjustments to any of these settings, we need to see what we're doing and we need something to reference in the real world. Luckily, we have our handy dandy pack of post-it notes. And post-it notes are exactly 76.55 millimeters by 76.55 millimeters. So we have a perfect square we can use in the real world that we can reference on our workspace. The reason we had to find our focal distance before tackling the step is because when you focus in on something, you actually change the scale of the object. So if we were to draw a 100 millimeter square in our workspace right now and then light it, but the laser was way out of focus, it would be much bigger or smaller than 100 millimeters. In order for any of this to be accurate, we have to make sure that we are absolutely in focus before continuing. We want to take our post-it notes and we want to set them on our laser bed. So I'm going to do that right now. Next, we're going to create a box in EasyCAD and we're going to set its dimensions to 76.55 by 76.55. And we'll hit apply and shift C to center. And now we have our perfect three inch by three inch square that represents our real life post-it notes. If we light this, we can see whether or not our post-it note matches the red light box that we're projecting. As you can see with our default settings, we're quite a bit off, so we're gonna have to make some adjustments. A lot of this is guess and check, and like I said, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you. It sucks, and it takes a little time to get things just right. If I were you, the first thing I would do is start messing with your scale for your X and Y to try to get the corners to match up with the corners of the post-it note. Once you have that done, you'll actually have a good jumping off point to start straightening out those lines. As you can see, just making slight adjustments from default can make a big difference. Scale is easy enough to understand, but what the heck do all of these other shapes do? Well, back in the day when I was setting up my fiber laser for the very first time, I scribbled the equivalent of a bar napkin drawing uh, on a sheet of paper that shows you exactly what these do and I'm gonna pull them up right now so that I can explain them to you guys. So here we go guys. Um, I know this probably doesn't look like it's very helpful, but it is I promise. So um, at the max value and min value, this is what it will do to each shape as you change these settings. I have it broken up into six sections to reflect the six sections here. You'll notice that my left column is affecting the y-axis and my right column is affecting the x-axis and that is because my Galvo 2 is set to x. If your Galvo 1 is set to x, these will be reversed. This will be the x-axis over here and the right column will be the y-axis. But for mine, Galvo 2 is the x, so this is x, this is y, uh, and let's just talk about these a little bit. So we'll see for section one, our bubble section, uh, if I set this to the max value, we get a very concave bend on the, that axis. Uh, it's bending the line inwards. If we reverse that and we set it to the minimum value, it's going to give us a very convex curve. It's gonna be bending that line outwards. The other concave convex setting over here does the same exact thing, it just does it for the other axis. 
using this chart you'll be able to find out which settings you need to adjust in order to get your perfect square just right you're going to want to make really small adjustments to these as you go um, you can make some larger adjustments just to get yourself started but once you really start to get close start making fine-tuned adjustments in order to get the perfect fit here are my final settings and uh, don't forget to take a screenshot when you're done because if you lose this copy of EasyCAD or your computer crashes or whatever, you don't want to have to do this all over again. Make sure you save your hard work, take a screenshot, back it up somewhere, you won't forget it. We'll go ahead and light up our post-it note now and as you can see it is a perfect fit. On all sides the laser is half on, half off the post-it note. We can see the outline both on the post-it note and on the table behind it. That's how you know you've got things just right with nice straight lines. With that step complete, and you've earned this, uh, you can go ahead and select a parameter from the library. And if you're a patron, you have all of these settings available to you uh, right now, and they get updated every single month for becoming a patron. So have at it, go nuts with that list, mark everything you can get your hands on, start bringing stuff in from home. Uh, if you have your laser at home, just grab stuff around the house, mark everything you can, make sure you use good exhaust and uh, have fun with it. We love doing this because it's fun uh, and you've got a ton of options here, so go crazy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that it helped you get started with your new laser marking machine or your new fiber laser lens. If it did, hit the like button and let other people know that the content was good and you got something out of it. If you wanna see a lot more videos just like this one, go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time that I post a new video. If you really, really loved it and this channel is the best thing that ever happened to you, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Right now, all of our Patreon supporters get instant access to our entire fiber and CO2 laser libraries, and it'll give you a great head start when you're playing with your new lens and your new machine. That's just one of a bunch of different things we do to provide value for our patrons, and once you get in there, you're gonna see what I mean. It really is awesome. If you wanna sign up to become a patron, there's a link down in the description right next to the link to the Discord, which is our amazing laser community filled with people who love lasers, love helping people, love talking talking about lasers and playing with lasers and all that stuff. So if you are looking for a supportive and friendly community where you can learn and grow with your machine, join the Discord. You won't regret it and it's going to be an invaluable resource for you. Anyway guys, that is everything I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Check out all of my videos for amazing helpful tips on what to do with this machine now that you've got it set up. We cover a lot of stuff and we're publishing new videos all the time. So don't forget to check back on the channel regularly and I'll see you in the next one.